Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the brand new, first of its nation, Greek Destroyer Velos in game to review for you guys today. Before we get too much further into this review, just want to give an absolutely massive shout out to the channel's Patreons. Because of their generous donations, I was able to buy my way through the event and get the Velos to review for you guys today. So that way, when she does get fully released, you guys will know if you want to pick her up or not. I am not a CC, nor supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So the generous donations from the channel's Patreons make this review and all reviews possible. If you wish to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do that, besides, of course, just watching the videos and the streams. Link to that is in the description down below if you would like to check that out. Alright, so the Velos, the first ever Greek ship in World of Warships. She is something alright, I've already played a fair amount of her already. She is, well, she's the first Greek ship in the game. This is a real still historical ship as well. This ship started out life as the USS, I believe the way you pronounce it is, is Charret or Charette. And she served with the US Navy, but then was later transferred to the Greek Navy like many, many a Fletcher was in 1959. Not just the Greek Navy, several navies around the world bought surplus Fletchers from the US Navy. I believe some served even with the Mexican Navy well into the 90s and I think even early 2000. So yeah, this is a real still historical ship. This ship really existed. Um, she is in game a very interesting combination between the American DDs and the already existing Pan Euro DDs. So that's that's a nice twist there. And she is probably best known for not anything that happened during war, but rather an act of mutiny. The ship was in Italy participating in some NATO exercises in, um, I believe, the 1970s when the captain and the officers decided that they were not going to return to Greece because of the regime of the colonels that was going on in Greece at that time. And the crew wanted to return because they, f they feared if they would not return, the regime would harm their families. So the officers were forced off of the ship in Italy and the ship returned to Greece with a replacement crew. Now, in-game, currently, the only way to obtain the Velos is in a series of sequential bundles or through a web campaign. However, in 2023, the beginning of 2023, I'm assuming like Wargaming does mostly with these ships that come out in these events, um, two months, probably around January, February, you will be able to purchase this ship in the armory for doubloons for 19,300 dubs or outright for cash for the normal cost of a tier nine premium. So for around 80 bucks. So there unfortunately will not be a free way to pick up this ship, but if you have the doubloons coupon, you can get this ship for I think just under 15,000 dubs, which is a pretty good deal for a tier 9 premium. But do you even want to do that in the first place? Well, today we're going to take a look at that and try to answer that question for y'all. So off the bat, as always, art department absolutely knocking it out of the park. I love the reflections on the bridge glass here. That's, that's very nice. That's some nice detail there, art department. Absolutely smash this one out of the park. Lots of small details on the ship. Looks absolutely great. If you guys have never seen the videos on um, how they go through and model all these ships, it's a painstaking process. It takes hundreds and hundreds of man hours for each ship. I think something like 700 man hours for each ship. And of course, bigger ships take more time. So, yep, our department fully earned their paychecks in this one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the ship, go over her armor, go over her quirks and features, and then we'll pop in the game for a gameplay review. All right, so this is a completely base ship. Uh, no commander skills nor modules have been applied. If you're wondering, you do get a special camouflage with the Velos here. Uh, if you go through the campaign in game, the sequential bundle bundles in game, I should say, you get the Trimarine or Trimarine camo. This is a pretty neat camel. I actually like it. I like the design style of it. You get the Trimarine Ram up here in the front, also with this neat little 
a tail bit at the end after playing hundreds of hours of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's pretty neat to see a camo like this in-game. The color combination is absolutely great too. I gotta give it to the art department there as well. But for the purposes of this video, we will keep the... Also, look at the wooden texture on there too. That, that, that looks so cool. We will keep the historical camo on. Uh, for the economic bonuses, she is a tier 9 premium, so she does come with the normal bonus package to the uh, tier 9 premium ships. And she does get the reduction in cost in post-battle service because she is a premium ship. Armor, she is, well, she's a Fletcher, 19 millimeters everywhere. And look at this, there's a sonar dome down here. Ah, cool that they modeled that in. Would be very cool if, you know, since it is a ship from... I think this is in... What? what, what? Nah, so it says 1943. Uh, well, since it's from the time that it was transferred to the Hellenic Navy, it should be, you know, at least a 1960 ship. So you'd think that would indicate some type of advanced ASW capabilities, but unfortunately that's not the case. But yep, uh, 19 millimeters everywhere. It's a DD. Not much more to see than that. All right. For survivability, base is 17,100. Lower on the hit point side for Tier 9. DDs. Her guns, you only get four. One was removed. However, you do have a 2.5 second base reload time rather than the Fletcher's uh, normal reload time. So you do pick up a bit of DPM there for the cost of a turret. Uh, the gun's 180 in 5.3 seconds. Their maximum spur is 106 meters with a maximum range of 12.1 kilometers. The HE does a maximum damage of 1800, has a 5% chance of causing a fire on the target, pins 21 millimeters of armor. And they come out the tubes at 792 meters a second. AP does a maximum damage of 2100. It also comes out the tubes at 792 meters a second. And they are very much American guns with, of course, American shell arcs and the like. If you know what that's like, well, you know what to expect here. We'll talk more about that in the gameplay portion. Torpedoes. She only has one set of tubes. It's one set of five. They reload in 60 seconds, however. Base. So... Yeah! They have a range of 10.5 kilometers, they have a maximum damage rating of 19,033, and they travel at 66 knots, and are spotted from 1.4 kilometers away. So you sacrifice one tube, but then you pick up one that reloads very fast, and the torpedoes hit quite hard. Uh, depth charges, she gets 12 bombs in a charge, two charges, and each charge takes 40 seconds to reload. A is up to 55, it's, it's not that great, I'll just tell you straight up. Your AA is literally these 6 76mm guns, and then the 4 or 5 inches are dual purpose. It, it's not great. Maneuverability, maximum speed 38 knots, 620 meter turning circle radius, and a rudder shift time of 3.9 seconds. Concealment, detectable by sea, base of 7.1 kilometers. For her gimmicks, well, it doesn't really have any. She has DFAA, she gets an engine boost, which gives you an 8% boost to your maximum speed for 120 seconds, and reloads at 120 seconds. And then smoke screen, good old American smoke, 30 second action time, 127 second dispersion time base, and of course, damage con. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and slap a commander and module build on this ship, and I will see you guys right back here in a moment. Alrighty, so for the module build, I went with the main armaments mod 1 to keep our four guns in the fight. This, of course, reduces the risk of them becoming incapacitated by 20%, speeds up their repair time by 20%, and increases their survivability by 50%. Then I went with the engine room protection because this reduces the chance of our engine room becoming incapacitated by 20%, and reduces the repair time of the engine and steering gears by 20%, as well as reduces the chance of the steering gears being incapacitated by 20%, and for DD that's very important. Then I went with Aiming Systems Mod 1, which gives us a 7% boost to our main battery shell dispersion, along with a 20% boost to our torpedo tubes traverse speed. Then I went with, the with Propulsion Mod 1, which gives the engine a 50% reduction in its time it takes for it to reach full speed. Then with Concealment Systems Mod 1, which gives the ship a 10% boost to its concealment. And then Main Battery Mod 3 to give the ship a 12% boost to its main battery reload time, which is always nice for some more DACA. A big up of the Valus being in the Pan Euro family is that she can have Jersey Swirsky on her, which is one of the best DD commanders in the game. 
Alright, so with Swirsky, I went with Prevention of Maintenance to reduce the chance of our modules being incapacitated by about 30%. Then Safety Circle, so we know how many enemy ships are aiming at us. And of course, Last Stand to keep our engine and rudders operating at 50% capacity once they do become incapacitated, because even with the modules, they, they still will. Then I went with Main Battery and A Specialist to give us a 5% boost to our reload time. Then Adrenaline Rush because, well, hey, if you're going to eat damage, it's best to get a bit of reload out of it. And Adrenaline Rush gives you a boost to your reload as you take damage. In this case with Swirsky, it's 0.25% per percentage of HP lost. Then went with Superintendent to give us an additional charge of smoke, injury boost, and DFAA. Survivability Expert to give us more health for our ship, 350 HP per tier to be exact. And then Consumant Expert to get our Consumant range down even more. So now, with the Velos, our guns now have a 2.1 second reload time and 99 meters of dispersion. And our concealment is now down to 5.8 kilometers. And our top speed is 39.9 knots with the speed flag. So that's the build that I was running on the Velos for the duration of the stream, the matches that I played afterwards. So, we'll go ahead and hop into a gameplay portion and go over the Velos and talk about whether or not it's a ship that you might want to pick up. Alright, so the Velos, the first Greek ship in the game. I'll tell you right off the start, this is a very strong start for the Greek tech tree, in my opinion at least. Well, if we even get one, because they did shove her into the Pan-Euro tech tree. So, for the Greek family of vessels, I do think this is a pretty strong starting off point. Now... Of course, the big question is, is this ship different enough to warrant you dropping 80 bucks or 14,000 doubloons with a coupon on it once she gets fully released over a normal Fletcher? Well, I've played a lot of Fletcher variants in this game because they sure do seem to have no issue with adding in a ton of Fletchers except for the one Fletcher we all definitely want and if you know, you know. But the Velos, it's a very interesting ship. I am relieved to see that they didn't give it any type of big gimmick or anything. It's just kind of a, well, not kind of, it is a, a differently tuned, a slightly differently tuned Fletcher. And in my experience with it, that has made her a pretty darn interesting ship to play. Now, how do you play the Velos? Well, like a Fletcher. <laughs> It does a lot of the same things that Fletcher does. I believe Wargaming was trying to say it's more of a gunboaty Fletcher because, you know, you have the, the quicker reload, but you did lose a turret. But again, you have a much quicker reload, especially if you build into it with the Velos than you do with the Fletcher. So, you know, I can see that for sure. But for me, I mean, the torpedoes, <laughs> the torpedoes are not bad either. 19,000 alpha, 60 second reload time. And you do get the pan euro torpedo uh, reticle, which is you get the narrow pattern or the super narrow pattern with the pan euro torpedoes. Well, not the pan euro torpedoes, with, with a pan euro torpedo um, reticle. But you get the 19,000 alpha torpedoes that you get and the 60 second reload time. And again, that, that, that is the base reload time. And you can mount Swirsky on this ship, so once you get those torpedo hits in, you do activate his uh, torpedo reload booster, which gives you, a, I believe, a 5% buff to your torpedo reload time, which is very nice on the Velos. So now you're throwing out these 19k alpha torpedoes even faster, and you might think, oh, it's only one set of torpedo tubes. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I suck with torpedo boats, but I did not have any problem getting torpedoes to connect with the Velos, simply because she can just spew them out so quickly. So I, I guess she's really more of a hybrid ship than a, a, a not the type of hybrid ship we don't like, but a, a, kind of a hybrid gunboat, tort boat here. And she's very good at both, in my opinion, at least. Um, but again, I played her like a Fletcher. I went to the caps. I backed stern into the caps, tried to cap, popped American smoke when I needed it. Uh, which is, of course, great for farming, especially if ships are having to be forced to push into you. You can easily put down a lot of hate with the DPM that the ship has. 2.1 second base, base reload time with the build that I have going on here. Then, of course, Adrenaline Rush can kick in, and you'll get that down even faster. So, 
yeah, she's very comfortable to play if you've played a lot of American DDs. I mean, it's the same way I play the Fletcher, I play the Kid, and I play the Black, so I felt right at home here in the Velos. And it was interesting enough, in my opinion, the way that they had her set up, to where it's different enough from the other Fletchers that we have in-game, or the other Fletcher type ships. I know the Force Sherman isn't a Fletcher, but... Again, I still play it like that because it's an American DD and it fits right into that American DD playstyle. And it's just a side grade, I guess you could say, to the Fletcher. So, running through her stats again now that we're talking about how they affect gameplay. So, starting off with her survivability, she does have, again, a lower end. She, 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 she's on the lower end of hit points here with 20,000 hit points. And she doesn't have any way to recover that. She doesn't get a heal or anything like that, which is understandable with the levels of DPM that you're bringing to the table here. If they did give this ship a heal, it would be a little bit much in my opinion. But again, it's on the lower ish side for tier 9 DDs, so you gotta be careful about that. Um, the guns, I, I love them. I mean, they're, they're the American DD guns, they act just the same. Um, they didn't feel any different. I don't think they have any difference like that. They, they do not have the um, Austin flight characteristics where they zip through this sh they zip through the air with, with a better air drag coefficient or anything like that I'm 99% sure they're just the American shells which is fine it's fine for a cap contesting fine for sitting behind an island lobbing with them over the island like a catapult vomiting vomiting them out every two sec two seconds with the uh, build that I'm running she does only have a maximum range of 12 kilometers but anyone that's played the American DDs know that you're not really hitting anything past those 12 kilometers anyway, unless they're sitting absolutely still. And for DD on DD gunfights, I felt like I could go toe to toe with just about anything that wasn't a Friesland or a Smallland, you know, or a Harugamo. Felt really confident in fighting for my caps with these guns, and they did that well. And I feel like, though, the loss of one turret for the gain in the DPM that these turrets have is more than satisfactory for the for, uh, for the ship. Now, um, HE, again, it does only pin 21 millimeters of armor and you can get that up a little bit more with um, IFHE. I didn't run it. I had no problem starting fires with them um, uh, when it came to larger ships and plus the torpedoes help out there with the larger ships too. And for fighting DDs, 21%, uh, 21 millimeter of pin is more than enough for dealing with DDs and the pretty decent chance of starting a fire with these shells because keep in mind, these shells do have a 5.5% um, chance of starting a fire, and you're vomiting these out every two seconds from four guns, so it doesn't sound like it's super high, but again, with the fire rate that you have, it's good. It's good enough, but if you do throw IF IFHE on there, that does cut that down, so... But again, I didn't really have any problems starting fires, and with the torpedoes, with the ability to spew torpedoes out every 60 seconds, that, again, pretty much took care of the capital ships I had to run up against. Um, the torpedoes, like I mentioned beforehand, these are great torpedoes, 60 second reload time, 19,000 al alpha damage, you get the the narrow and, and then the very narrow spread with the torpedoes, 10.5 kilometer range, 66 knots, not the fastest torpedoes in the world, not the slowest ones either, but again, from the games I had in her, they worked just fine, and by just fine, I mean very, very, very well. AA, uh, no, it, it's it's not an AA boat. <laughs> it is absolutely not an AA boat. Even though it does have DFAA, yeah, sure, it's there. But when it's running, of course, it's DFAA. It's it makes the AA a little bit more effective in this case, but not an AA barge. Keep that turned off unless the CV just won't leave you alone. That's what I did at least, and it worked just fine. Uh, maneuverability, thirty-nine point nine knots. Fairly quick for a DD, but again, not breaking any speed records. The engine boost does help with that quite a bit. Although, I didn't really use the engine boost to, of course, you know, try to find out what the top speed was. My engine boost is more useful for maneuvering in and out of the cap, playing with the throttle, because I did have the acceleration mod on as well. So, you know, playing with the throttle, quick, quickly zipping in and out of um, lines of fire and backing up behind islands, using it to dodge torpedoes. It was more useful for that. I found that that was something that was pretty nice to have in the caps, as well as, you know, of course, increasing my ability to disengage out of unfavorable situations. Combine that with the smokescreen. You have a nice set of tools there to ensure that you get to dictate the terms of your engagement. And I like that. I do. 
Um, detection, 5.8 kilometers. That's on the better side for uh, Tier 9 DDs. Again, you're not going to be being the Japanese. I believe those guys can still get gets their, get, uh, get theirs down to 5.5. But for, again, what it is, it's more than functional and more than um, capable of doing what it needs to do with these set of characteristics. For the consumables, like I said, DFA8, it's there. When you use it, sure, you have good AA for its duration, but bleh, other than that, engine boost, like I said, I very much like this. It again, it helps you dictate the terms of your engagement. And of course, damage con, well, it, it's, it's damage con. You do kind of need that <laughs> as well, but it's not a special damage con or anything like that. Smoke screen, that's the one I skipped over. Smoke screen, it's the American, good old American smoke, long duration. Uh, you can farm to your heart's content when you got it. Uh, when you got it popped up again big nice cloud as well so there's plenty of room for your friends that want to join you in your smoke screen as well so all in all the Velos is she worth it I'd say she's worth the discounted doubloom price so that means if you have your coupon for ships for doubloons which um, I believe is gonna be resetting on December 9th yeah sure I think she's worth it for that do not go buy your way through the event right now. Don't do that. That's a waste of money. This ship is absolutely not worth that. If you want to buy your way through the event, it's a little over $100 to get. Trust me, I know. Absolutely not worth it. Don't do that. Just wait the couple of months it's going to take for this ship to come out. If you really want to get a, a, a Fletcher that's good at cap contesting right now, go get the black for Dublin's, the, um, for, 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 for coal. The black for coal is better than this ship. But this is still a fun ship in my mind. It's a different enough approach at a Fletcher class to make it a, a fun in a different time. And sure, for the discounted doubloon price, I think it's worth it. For the outright doubloon price, it's going to be a little over 19,000 doubloons. That's nah, a lot for a tier 9. And there's other tier 9s you can spend your money better on. Like, there's not a lot of ships in the Pan Euro tree right now, so not really a commander trainer i mean sure you're probably gonna be using a very similar build to this i mean this is literally my pan euro dd build on swirsky here on this ship i sure i could probably tweak it a little bit better to be better for the ship so i mean yeah it's could be a good commander trainer but there's only one line in the pan euro line right now so is dumping 80 bucks into a ship that only has one line to train commanders for worth it i wouldn't say so and plus you still have the the friesland i'm sorry the Groningen. they moved that over to, to the um the Netherlands line so you don't have that anymore so I mean I guess if you want that okay but other than that I mean it has its, its historical value again real still historical ship first Greek ship in the game sure but yeah I don't think it's worth much more than the discount on the bloom price again unless you're a history buff or maybe you're from Greece and you want to pick up your nation ship it's a good ship don't get me wrong it is a good ship I just think you, you can spend your money in better ways Overall, I would give this ship a... Oof, this, it's, it's hard for me, because I really want to give it an 8. But... Ah, man. I can't give it an 8, because it's not different enough. I'd give it a 7. It's a really solid 7, in my mind. It's, it's above average, but it's not, like, super outstanding. You know what? Actually, no, screw it. It gets an 8. You know why it gets an 8? Because there's no gimmick. There's no stupid gimmick with this ship. That's why it gets an 8. It's a good, solid ship with a set of characteristics and a set of consumables and no stupid gimmick. No reload boosters, no gimmicky engine boost consumables, no gimmicky smoke or radar or sonar or hydro or whatever other gimmick they could think of. Just a good, solid set of characteristics and consumables with no gimmick. That's why it gets an 8. It's war gaming reaching back into its past when they can make good, good uh, premiums without stupid gimmicks. You know what? You get an 8, Velos. Good little ship here. But again, still, if you're going to buy it, Buy it with the coupon and get the discounted price. Pros being four very rapid firing five inch guns with American shell arc, so you can slightly catapult your HE behind islands. The AP is also pretty good, by the way, uh, if you do have to use it. It is a you know good solid AP. I, I made a was it a Hawk I think cry with it. It does also have the excellent 60 second reload time on the torpedoes with 19k alpha with the um, narrow and then very narrow, super narrow, whatever it's called aiming reticles and again 60 second real time those torps don't underestimate those torps does get the engine uh, the engine boost consumable along with the american smoke and it is a pretty nippy ship when you do build into it and also is pretty maneuverable as well and does can get its consumable down to 5.8 kilometers 
For the downside, it does have a lower HP than most other tier uh, tier 9 destroyers. It doesn't have the best AA despite having an AA... Uh, what, what, what is it? AA... whatever. DFAA, that's what it's called. God, Mount Patton is a little tired right now. Despite having DFAA, it doesn't really have the best AA ever. And it doesn't have a heal despite having a very low HP count or, or any way to recover its health or any type of improved damage saturation effect or anything like that. Again, it does have a lot of DPM, so I do understand why it can't have it. But given that it does have a you know lower HP than other tier 9 DDs on average, it, it felt like it could have you know some type of improved damage saturation or a little heal, heal or something like that. But it doesn't. So overall, guys, again, 8 out of 10, really good ship here, and one I would recommend picking up with the coupon for Blooms when it comes out in early 2023. If you're an American DD enjoyer, you will definitely like this ship. And if you are looking at maybe getting into the uh, pan-euro DD lines, this could be a good place to introduce yourself to some of those concepts, being an American DD player. Um, but again, overall, one I wouldn't buy at full price, but definitely when it comes out for Blooms, I would recommend picking up. Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And to, subs to subscribe, we are on our way to 40,000 subs. Once we get there, we will be doing a 40k giveaway like we do for all, all of our other milestones that we reach. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.